Hey, what's going on guys? Root of the Null here, coming back at you with another Python tutorial. Let's get idle fired up and let's see what we can do here. I'm going to create a uh, new script, file.python. Save this as, obviously file.python, but type in your shebang line if you need to. Create a new class, because we like object-oriented programming, or OOP. Create our constructor, and that will happen automatically when we create an object. Let's test if this is the current script we are running. And if it is, we can create an object. Alright, now, let's get started. I'm going to create a new string variable here, self.string. And I'm going to say, this is a string. Okay. Now, the function that I want to introduce to you guys today is called the, uh, the string replace function. And what this will do is it will replace any occurrence that it finds of a substring inside your string, and you can replace it with whatever you'd like. So we can run self.string, and you can use our dot selector, and we can type in replace and call that function. So the first parameter is going to be what it is that you're looking for and you want to replace. So we'll say is, and then we can change it to whatever we like. So let's say at. And let's run this. That add a string. So it changed the first is that it found inside the this, and then it changed the next one that it find as the regular is. So that add a string. Now, there's another parameter we could put on here, and that is uh, a count, or a number of times that this function will run, or at least the number of times it will replace that, that thing in the string. So let's try that. Let's, if, we added, uh, if we added one, it'll only do this once. That is a string. So it's going to disregard the second one that it finds. But if we leave this blank just the way it does before, it'll repeat it as many times as it needs to and replace every occurrence of it. If we change it to two, obviously, it'll do all of them because uh, that add a string, and that's, that's all it'll find. But if we change it to like an I, A, T, A, A, that, the that's as a string. And this I is being disregarded because we're only changing it two times. But if we remove this, that as a string, and uh, then if we do three times, it'll do it all. So, let's try and recreate this all on our own. It's going to be a little tough to work with this, uh, this, let's see, this maximum count number, but, hey, you know, we'll work with it, and we'll see what we can do. This one might, this tutorial might be a little hefty, and it's gonna, it's definitely gonna be a little bit complex, but let's start anyway. Let's get replaced, let's start our function name. Let's call this, uh, replace. We're gonna need some variables here. We'll call it self, of course, working string, and then, uh, replace... Let's spell working right, first of all. Replace with. And then we'll do count. And count, is since it's a default parameter, it's an optional, we're just going to change that to none. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so you can see everything that we're going to do here. And we'll check it out. So now the first thing we're going to need is the length of the things that we're working with. So we need working string length. Working string length. We can just get the length with the len function of the working string that we've passed to it. And then we need the replace length. This is going to be the uh, length of replace. Now, since we can't add um, anything, or we can't change things inside of a string, we have to create a new string. And this new string will start off being blank, or an empty string, and then we're going to be able to add to it while we loop. And now we're going to create a new uh, incrementer variable, and this is going to be i. So i can be 0. And uh, now let's get started. First, we're going to try it without worrying about the count variable, and then we're going to add that in later. So uh, let's create a while loop now. Now, we're going to use a while loop rather than a for loop, because the for loop, when we're using uh, it in conjunction with the operator, if we did uh, for i in range uh, working string length, if we did this, because range has that static call, if we change it to like uh, maybe 20 or something, it's going through every single one of these inside um, for, for a value of i. We can't really change i and have it become whatever we want. It's static. It has to be any one of these every time it iterates. So instead, we're going to use a while loop so we can control the flow and how our i variable is going to operate. So if we change this uh, while loop, now while i is less than working string length, so it's the same as if we were going through a uh, that for loop there. We can we can test if the working string with the index of i, and then we can slice here i plus the replace length. So we're testing if the current thing is uh, is what we're going to be replacing, or at least 
something that we would want to replace, what we would do is we would set that new string, and we would add on what we're replacing with, and then we can increment i, or at least add it to the current replace length, so we can skip over all the characters that are inside what we were replacing. Now, if not, we still want to add to uh, to our new string, so we get the uh, the original string, and we can add on working string, and then index with that i variable. So every character that isn't something that we're replacing will be added to that string. And now we're going to want to concat uh, at least increment i. So now we can run this, and uh, let's see. Is there anything else we had to do here? I think when we're done that while loop, we can just return new string. And let's see if it'll work the way we want it to. Let's go ahead and put it up in our constructor. First of all, let's print the original one. We can print out self.string. And I'm going to concatenate on here a couple new lines so it's a little clean. We're going to use the, the, uh, the real function, the real built-in one. And then we can print with our function, self.replace. And then we're going to pass in self.string. We want to remove the, or at least replace the i's with a's. And we run this. That's as a strang, and that's as a strang. Now if we reply, if we put it in the original built-in function that we wanted a maximum number, if we change it to like uh, 2, we get that's as a string. Now if we did this with ours though, nothing would happen because we haven't added support for that yet, uh, just yet. So we're going to try and do that now. This is going to be a little bit more uh, dirty or a way to fix it, because what we should do is we should change this while loop process into a function, but for the time being we don't have to worry about that. We're just going to uh, see what we can do uh, by default. So let's test if, uh, if count is equal to none, first of all, then we can run our original function, or at least what we have here. This, uh, this while loop. You can copy and paste that in. And we can select all of it, and if you're in idle, you can use the control and then the, uh, the ending brace key, the ending bracket key. So now we have that all set, and if count is not equal to none, you can add an else statement in here. Else, we can do something else. First we want to test the, for the type of count. So if the type of count is not an integer, we're gonna want to, we're gonna want to change that so we can set count to uh, the integer form of count. So now let's get to work. Let's gonna set a counter. Counter is going to be the number that we're going to keep repeating up until we get to the the specified count or the specified uh, number of times they want this done. So we can set counter to be zero, and then we can uh, create our while loop that we had right up at the top here. I'm just gonna paste that in. And now if we check all through that, what we're gonna what we're gonna want to do is replace or at least down here when we if we find something that we're replacing, we're gonna want to increase the counter variable, obviously, because we're only gonna do it so many times. And if not, we're still gonna want this, and then we can break out of here. But first we need to test if counter is actually less than count. If it is, we can test for this other if statement here along with the else. So let's copy and cut those in. Okay, and now we're going to want to include this else statement alongside the, uh, the, the topmost if statement here too, because even if we're, we're finished replacing things, we still want to get the entire string. So we're going to want to copy and paste this, and uh, put one right at the end of our top if statement. So we can cut this here, and that should be okay. And now when we're done, we've broken out of everything, we can return that new string. So we're sort of repeating this process again, but making up for the fact that we do have a count variable now, or at least we're limiting how many times we can add on to this. Or uh, we're limiting how many times we can replace something. So let's try and call our function now. 
that's as a string and that's as a string. It works in both cases now because we've added for the fact for that count variable. We're going to keep increasing the counter variable every time we replace something and only if it's less than count will we replace something. But we're still going to want to add on the rest of the string no matter what. So this is why we need all these else statements inside here. It's a little bit complex and a little bit hard to follow, but you do have to keep track of all the variables that you're looking at. We still have to keep track of count, you have to keep track of your, your looping variable, whether it's i and your incrementer is working, whether you have counter, whether that's less than count and that sort of thing. So it's easy to get lost in this code, but it still solves that same problem as the replace function, and we've created it and turned it into our own. So uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I know this one is a little bit more in-depth and crazy, but uh, you know there's a lot we can do with it. Let's let's experiment just a little bit more. Let's a little bit more before I let you guys go. Let's turn this into. Um, let's see, we replace as many times as we want. That's as a string. We can change the is to an at. If we run this, it changes that at a string. We can only do this once if we want to. We can even put in something that isn't found in there, it, it, and it'll replace it with the, the same old regular string. So, look what you've done, guys. This is a pretty, pretty handy function, and this is how it works on the back end. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I know it was a bit more lengthy and there's a lot to it, but hey, the replace function is definitely helpful. <laughs> so uh, thank you guys for watching. It'd be cool if you could uh, like the video, maybe leave me a comment, let me know what you think, and uh, maybe subscribe. I don't know. <laughs> it's whatever you'd like to do. But hey, thanks again, guys, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye.